These diets that are out there, they appeal to us because one, we feel like they're going to work, but the problem is that they're not very sustainable. All right, so imagine you and I, we're hanging out together. We get our phones. We get on something that the phone gives us. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's social media, and we see something. We see someone that's very much like us. Maybe we look at this guy, and he's about the same age as us. Maybe we see this mom, and she's had three kids as well. And do you know what they're talking about? They're talking about nutrition. They're talking about a diet that they've been on that's transformed their life. So you're looking at this person, and we see that they're a little bit like us. We hear what they've done, and we think, man, that seems pretty doable to start. And I really like the results that they've gotten. Now, here's the question that I have for you. What's going through your head? Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth what you are thinking when you see this. I know what you're thinking because you're a human being like me. You think, well, this is finally the thing that's going to work for me. And look, I know this is hard because we just started a conversation, but I want to let you down easy and I want to be honest with you. It may work, but it won't work for very long. You can think of this proposition in the same way that uh, you think about speed dating. You could look at this thing that you're seeing and be like, man, that has a lot of uh, emotion charged to it. It's almost like a love affair. These diets that are out there, they appeal to us because, one, we feel like they're going to work but the problem is that they're not very sustainable. What we should be looking for in nutrition, in diet, is more of a monogamous long-term relationship, and I'll explain. And the second part where this is always gonna be a letdown, these things that we see, is that it's not really for you. You're not really that person. Now, you may have a few things that, that you have in common with them, and it's true that, that you're probably not that special, But when we start to examine what your life looks like, when we start to examine what potentially is the constraint for you, often we find that it's not exactly what it is for this celebrity or mom that's peddling a fitness program online or the president of the UFC. They they don't actually have everything in common with you. Now, the good news, and there is good news, the good news is that those feelings that you felt inside, those questions that you you came up with, like, hey, could this work for me? That's a good question to ask, and it is the right question to ask. And then secondly, this feels like it's doable to start is also a great question. And so you're on the right path. It's just the place that you're looking And the ways that you think this are going to go is very contrary to what reality says is necessary. Now, I'm coming to you today because often videos like this talk a lot about education. I love those too. Videos often interview somebody else and and there's there's some salient piece of information that you hear and that thought changes the way that you think and that way that you think potentially changes action and then therefore you have like this new system but we're going to start with the end in mind and instead of trying to educate you we're just going to talk implementation some of these videos we have are quite lengthy this one's going to be quite short and it's by design not meant to give you all of the information around nutrition that you possibly could have but it's to provide a a heuristic a rule of thumb a, a basic framework that i think that if you use this It could not just uh, give you short-term results, but it could be something that you could sustain for the rest of your life. We found that if we were working with someone one-on-one, that there's a series of questions that you could ask, and the clarity of those answers, or the lack thereof, would let you know the areas that you would want to investigate with this person. 
I share this with you because you don't have to be a coach. You can ask these questions to yourself. These five questions have to do with quantity, quality, timing, planning, and consumption. We ask these questions very specifically, and they go like this. What's the amount of protein that you're consuming on a daily basis? If the person answers that question with a rapid response and great clarity, we know, hey, that's probably not the constraint. That's probably not the issue. That's probably not the thing that there's no SOP for them to follow. Now, if we say, hey, how much protein do you have in your diet on a regular basis? And they say, what's a protein? Hey, we know that's an area that we could potentially start to clarify. And one of the easiest ways to get um, some momentum is to go from zero, which is I have no plan and I don't know what you're talking about, to a one. That's a 100% improvement versus somebody saying, well, I typically get between 30 and 35 grams of protein every meal and I'm eating five times a day. To, to delve into that and to go from 90% to 95% isn't going to produce the same results. So we'd like to ask the question around protein because protein is the macronutrient that we found influences the quantity of the other macronutrients as well. So that's question one. Question two, you ask yourself, how keyed into food sensitivities and allergies are you and how adherent are you to those aforementioned sensitivities? Now, why do we ask this? Well, it's really all about quality. There's 220 million people in America alone that apparently have some type of food sensitivity or allergy. The big four are dairy, gluten, eggs, and legumes. And for most people that we've interacted with, there may not be a full-blown inflammatory response, but there's some things that we could categorize as red light, yellow light, and green light. Very few things are red light, but there's some things that we should probably be paying attention to that we need less of. By asking that question, if someone has no idea what you're talking about or they've never figured that stuff out, it's an easy path to travel. Question number three is around timing. What is the frequency of meals that you have? Now, we're not going to get into the weeds or minutia of what's the optimal amount of meals or even the optimal amount of timing between these meals. But if you have no idea where you're currently at, it's an easy place to start to tinker. Question number four is, how premeditated are these plans that you have? Do you have a pretty set schedule of when you'll buy groceries, of what you'll eat at this time, or are you just winging it? And the last question is around consumption, is around what mealtime actually looks like. Hey, when you sit down to eat, is this a stressful activity? Or is this something that you find very relaxing, very pleasurable? And the real point blank objective question is, how long is it taking you to consume a meal? So those five questions, quantity, quality, timing, planning, and consumption, give us as coaches a much better understanding of where somebody currently is. Now, what do you do with these questions? The point of most diets in Western society is to manipulate something, time, quantity, quality, planning, or consumption to limit the amount of food that we consume. Some are very clear and obvious. Hey, we're going to, we're going to weigh and measure and pay attention to the amount of calories that you have, and we're going to decrease that. That's pretty obvious. Some aren't as obvious. Time-restricted eating is limiting the amount of time that you have to consume food, and so it makes sense that you would consume less food. Things like paleo, things like the Mediterranean diet, even veganism seek to eliminate a whole macronutrient or a, a subtype of that macronutrient that would result in us eating less food. So despite the method, the principle that's at play in most of these diets is the same. So as you ask these questions, we want to ask ourselves, and this is where you can be your own coach, as you ask yourself, what do I not know very much about in terms of these five questions? And pardon my French, but don't bullshit yourself. Question number one is what are you not actually paying attention to? 
We have a finite amount of attention. And there's something on this list, my guess is, is that you're not paying attention to as well as you could. Now, when we ask that question, a lot of times what we're looking for is uh, a resistance. A resistance means that they don't like that we ask that. If somebody doesn't like that you ask something, it means, one, they don't really know what to do with it. There's lots of ways that we can break that down. But if you find that in yourself, put a little note next to it. Now, if you ask yourself these five questions... And the answer is, I know everything about all five of these. Yet you still need to lose weight. I'd like for you to go back to question one or objective one, which is not bullshit yourself. And to make sure that you're actually being honest with this answer. It's not for anybody else but you. Now, if you get to all five of those questions and there's great clarity and you still need to lose weight, then chances are the way that you're going about it could also be tweaked. Lastly, if you ask those five questions and you have great clarity around all of them and you don't need to lose weight, this probably isn't the area that you need to focus on. There's probably some other constraint in the rest of your life. Now, what do you do once you figure out something that does need some clarity, something that does seem to attention? Don't fix it. I think that's the tendency that we all have. Hey, something's wrong. Let me fix it. There is uh, uh, an intermediate step in between figuring out where you could be better and then doing something about it. And it's just observation. You take a little journal, you bring it with you every time you consume food. And if you have no idea how much protein that you have at each meal, eh, you're just going to start to pay attention to it. You're going to start to record what your meals look like. If you have no idea how long it takes you to eat a meal, you're going to start to pay attention to it. If you have no idea if you have any food sensitivities, you're going to take one thing, remove it, see if you have less diarrhea, and then bring it back into your diet. It's very simple field research that you're going to do here, and you'll do it long enough that you have an understanding of what that now means. Now, I'm here to tell you, and there's been research done, that by simply bringing awareness to what it is you're doing can often be enough of a catalyst and a change where there's nothing else that you need to do. For us, we're just trying to get a better understanding of what the answer actually is. So you'll do that as long as it takes to get an answer. Now, once you get that answer, the last part is to come up with something that's not hard. Every freaking diet that I see out there has the same thing in common. Let's make something so death-defyingly hard that you will see results very quick. And look, if this was climbing Mount Everest and the stakes were so high that you had to get really aggressive with the progress, that would make sense. If you could stop eating after you lost weight and you wouldn't have to keep doing this anymore, then to get really aggressive with whatever your protocol is, makes sense. But I did a little bit of math. And if you're 40 years old and you die at 80, it means you have 2,000 weeks left in your life. If you're eating three meals a day, that means that you are trying to start something that you can sustain not for 75 days or six weeks. You're trying to sustain it for 42,000 meals. That's the habit that you're trying to start. That's the change that you're trying to make. So we're not trying to make it as big and as bold or with as aggressive a results as we can. We're trying to tweak something that as you start it, you think, this is easy. Here's some examples of what I'm talking about. You didn't know how much protein you had at a meal. Now you do. You realize that there's several meals that you don't have any protein in. Your new system, not the goal or the outcome, we don't care about that, but the new system is I'm going to make sure that I have protein the size of my fist every time I eat for the rest of my life. Is that hard? It shouldn't be. But if it is, then we need to probably find something else that makes it even easier to implement. Say that we have a hard time eating our meals greater than three minutes and we do it standing up. 
man, the new system just requires you to sit down. Can you sit down every meal for the rest of your life? I think so. I mean, to me, that doesn't sound too hard, but really it's ultimately up to you. The point here is that we need to pick something that feels so obnoxiously easy that you can tell yourself, I can do this for the rest of my life. Now, there's some stipulations that go with that. One, whatever you pick, you're going to fail at. That's also not a requirement here. Perfection is not a requirement. As you're this laboratory of one and you're starting to experiment on this thing that you had no idea about and now you do, inevitably, you're going to make some mistakes. That doesn't mean that you're a, a piece of crap or that you didn't want it hard enough. It just means you're a human being with a complex life. And so every iteration of this that you fail, pay attention and make it better. Tweak, come up with a different way. What's nice and what's encouraging is because there's so many different things out there for nutrition that we can follow, it means that we have lots of ways that we can approach it. So if we try one thing and say there's a few of these different questions that we don't have great clarity around and we pick one and there's just so much resistance and it's really hard, pick something else. This is, even though you can do this by yourself, this is where it's helpful to have a coach because inevitably they have more tools. They have different gimmicks. They have different ways to go about this and implement it. And so even though this is a long-term process, the iterative portion where you're trialing and erring and you're failing as fast as you possibly can to figure out something that works is helped with the coach, but you don't have to have that. Now, when you do this, when you pick something that's new and you say, I think I can do this for the rest of my life. I think I can set my fork down in between bites every time I eat. I think I can just only have dairy one day a week because the other days it gives me explosive diarrhea. When you come up with whatever that decision is, you're probably going to wonder what the results are going to be. And the results initially are nothing. <laughs> the results initially are Nothing's going to happen. And think about that for a sec. If you're picking something that's sustainable, would it have this huge biological disruption to your system? Initially, it would not feel that way. Now, let's use another example. You start to exercise, and instead of taking a very intense approach, you decide to, to focus on volume. And let's say you do something like run, and that's your activity. And you're not starting off with a marathon, and you're not starting off with repeat 100s times 50. You're just starting off with a very small amount of distance. But you sustain that for your entire life. Do we like your chances of being acclimated to that activity as you get into late stages of life? I think we would all agree the answer is yes. So with this, it's very contrary. It's If, if these diets are fads, it's the exact opposite of that. This is, this is classically approaching nutrition. It's doing something for the virtue of being good, knowing that it's something that we can maintain, and knowing that the payoff is not going to be something that happens in four weeks, but it's something that will make our life throughout all of our days better. It's a weird trade-off, but nutrition, I'm convinced, needs to be in some other realm other category because you have to do it. You, you can't opt in to eating. You have to do it. Everything else surrounding health besides sleep, like you have a choice whether to participate in it or opt out. And so this feels like it's something a lot different. To close, if this is something that seems radical, well, that's because it is. To remind you what radical means, it means back to the roots, back to the origin of what, if we strip all of this social proof away, what something's supposed to be. This podcast and channel are um, a holy crusade for that art of radical health and athlete design. If you follow this channel, if you, if you listen to this, it's a pledge that you are also against the mainstream. It's a, it's a pledge that you are a part of this holy crusade. So I hope this has been helpful, but please, don't you dare, 
click that subscribe button. Don't you dare keep listening to this if you're not really about that. Thank you.